Why is the world always against Israel? Every day I log on to X and I see more of the world standing against Israel. And I'm going to tell you why the world stands against Israel. So we know that the world is ran by the lowercase God of this world known as Satan. When God chose Abraham and made a covenant with Abraham through Isaac and through Israel or Jacob, it is the only covenant that God has ever made with a country or a nation. So it doesn't surprise me that the world is against Israel because Satan hates Israel and those who are under God's covenant. If that is the Christians through the covenant made through the blood of Jesus. Matthew 26, 27 to 28. Or the covenant made through Abraham. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Satan hates everything about God. He hates the things God loves and loves what God hates. And we know that the governments are actually ran by Satan, for we see in Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 to 10. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. So we see that Satan took Jesus up a tall mountain and said, I will give you all these kingdoms if you would bow down and worship me. But we also don't see Jesus rebuking Satan that they're not his kingdoms to give, for they are his to give to anyone he pleases. So when God created Adam, Adam had the dominion over the world. Genesis 1, 26 to 28. But as Satan convinced Adam and Eve to sin against God, Adam voluntarily in his rebellion gave the dominion of the earth over to Satan and his kingdom. That's why you see laws that are passed around the world that are just truly satanic. For an example, pride and abortion. But it's not just nations that Satan controls. But we also see in religions, for example, Hindus and Buddhists, but especially in Islam where Satan is the god mentioned in the Quran. This is not an attack on Muslim people, but on the doctrine itself. For I have personally met very passionate, loving Muslims, but the doctrine that is taught is a false, demonic, satanic doctrine, where it even says, kill those who do not embrace Islam. So it's no wonder that we see all this violence come from Islamic terrorist groups, because their religion endorses it. We know that Satan steals, kills, and destroys, John 10.10, 10, in humanity, governments, and our walk with Christ. The original attack by Hamas shows the gruesome doctrine of the Quran. And when you are saying you're supporting Hamas, you are supporting an evil, demonic, satanic organization who does not care about any life, but those who embrace Allah. Those who will call me a bigot for this video, I would like you to check out the pinned video in my description. Comparing the teachings of Prophet Muhammad and the Biblical Jesus Christ. You will see that there is a huge difference. Every religion has their crazies. But let's look at the founders. I advise anyone to check out that video because it will open your eyes to see how gruesome Muhammad really was. But I'm going to share with you a couple Quran verses and how the Quran tells its followers to act around non-believers. And then I'm going to share with you a Bible verse that tells us how we should act around non-believers. So in the Quran, we see a couple verses that applies to Muslims and how they should treat non-believers. Muhammad verse 4. When you meet the unbelievers, smite their necks. Then when you have made wide slaughter among them, tie fast the bonds. Then set them free, either by grace or ransom, until the war lays down its burdens. Surah 2, 191. And kill them non-Muslims, wherever you find them, kill them. Such is the recompense of the disbelievers, non-Muslims. At Tauba, verse 5. When the sacred months are over, slay the idolaters wherever you find them, arrest them, besiege them, and lie in ambush everywhere for them. Al-Anfal, verse 39. Make war on them until idolatry is no more, and Allah's religion reigns supreme. At Tauba, verse 29. Fight against those who do not believe in Allah or in the last day, and who do not consider unlawful what Allah and His Messenger have made unlawful, and who do not adopt the religion of truth from those who were given the scripture fight until they give the jizya willingly while they are humbled. Very demonic verses, and I could go more, but I think you get the picture. What does the Bible say about non-believers? Romans 12 verses 9 to 21, let love be without hypocrisy, abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. 
Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice, and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. While in the Quran, it has killed those who do not embrace Islam. And in Christianity, you are to pray for those, and love those, and forgive those who persecute you. It's quite the contrary between these two religions, and I believe that the world needs more love than hate, more good than bad.